Hey everyone, it's Mr. Drake. Today's video is going to be about advances in transportation and technological advances throughout the early 19th century that sort of helped the Industrial Revolution along. Some of the biggest technological advancements during the Industrial Revolution actually didn't directly impact industry, but rather impacted agriculture. Uh, the same way that uh, factories transformed the eastern part of the United States, uh, the, the rise of large-scale farming transformed the West, and that happened because of new technology. There are two particular inventions you should know for early Industrial Revolution that, uh, that really transformed the uh, uh, state of agriculture in the West. The first is the steel plow which you see there on top, uh, that was invented by John Deere, uh, perhaps you've heard of him, first uh, produced in the late 1830s. And the reason the steel plow is important is that the soil in the Midwest, where farmers were settling, was very, very tough, and the ground was kind of hard to break through. Um, it, that area was referred to um, by a lot of westward settlers as the American Desert. Uh, because it was so dry and the soil was so hard. But the steel plow was able to cut through that tough soil and allow farmers to uh, plant their crops. Um, another important invention is the mechanical reaper invented by Cyrus McCormick, um, sometimes just known as the McCormick Reaper. Uh, the mechanical reaper made it easier to harvest grain, uh, particularly wheat. Um, you could, you know, pull it by horse over, the, uh, over your crops and it would basically cut down the grain uh, and, and make harvesting much easier. Um, with these inventions, production of, of food uh, and other crops skyrocketed. Uh, the downside is overproduction. Um, eventually, farmers began to saturate the market with uh, these goods that would, of course, drive the price down. But uh, agriculture, again, completely transforms um, the Midwest. All this agriculture booming in the West and the movement of people into the Midwest uh, meant that transportation had to improve. Uh, roads and canals are what came along first uh, to help with not only the movement of people but also the movement of goods. Um, after the War of 1812, America was still predominantly a very rural nation and didn't have much transportation development at all. Um, if you were a merchant in, say, Philadelphia. If you had $9, you could pay $9 to have a ton of goods shipped all the way across the Atlantic to England for $9. That same $9 would get your goods about 30 miles inland because the, the infrastructure just was not there and it was so difficult and took so much manpower to get goods inland. So they had to start building roads and canals and things like that to just facilitate the, the movement um, of goods. Um, the National Road uh, was one of the first major highways built by the United States. You see a map there of where it ran. It ran from Cumberland, Maryland, which is near Washington, D.C., basically, um, all the way through the Midwest, over the Appalachian Mountains, uh, to what we would now essentially call um, St. Louis. Construction resumed on the National Road in 1816. It had begun in 1801, and then it was scaled back when um, uh, Jefferson took office and, and the, the role of the federal government uh, diminished. There was also a Lancaster Turnpike near Philadelphia that was constructed uh, or completed in 1818. Uh, this made moving people a lot easier. The transporting of goods was still pretty tough on the roads because they weren't very wide and uh, um, still a little bit treacherous, especially over... Uh, the mountains. Um, the eastward traffic was was a lot of livestock from Midwestern farms, cattle and pigs and things like that. And then farmers in the Midwest would typically just ship their goods down the Mississippi River uh, to the port of New Orleans. Um, canals also make uh, things much easier. Uh, the Erie Canal is the most notable of those. It was proposed by New York Governor DeWitt Clinton in the early 1810s. Um, it was completed in 1825. It was known as Clinton's Ditch um, since uh, he was the uh, kind of brainchild behind it. Uh, the most important thing about the uh, Erie Canal, which you see a map of it there, is it connects um, the Great Lakes to the Hudson River. So as a result, um, you no longer have to ship goods all the way over land. You could almost ship things by 
exclusively by water from the Great Lakes, you know, all the way down to the Port of New York. And this helped New York overcome Philadelphia as being uh, the main port on the eastern seaboard. And steamboats are also um, a, a big part of why canals became important. The steamboat was invented by Robert Fulton in 1807. Um, it could travel upstream, obviously, um, and that makes transportation of goods out of the West um, much easier as well. Um, the Erie Canal also has an uh, impact on peopling, uh, who lives in what areas. Uh, it was built primarily by Irish immigrants, so it transformed the, uh, the area that it went through and led to a large uh, influx of the Irish uh, into upstate New York. By about 1840, there were about 3,300 miles of canals in the United States. So um, most of these are on the eastern seaboard. Um, but there are some downsides. There weren't that many roads, canals, you know, it's limited to where there is some water where you can build the locks and everything. So there's still not a lot of areas that are served by this infrastructure. A bigger transformation than roads and canals came in the form of railroads. Um, the first steam locomotive was built by a man named Peter Cooper in 1830. It was known as Tom Thumb. There's a picture of it there. Uh, railroad construction really exploded um, after the, the steam locomotive was invented. And by the outbreak of the Civil War, uh, there's about 32,000 miles of railroads lining the United States. Um, railroads initially connected not cities together. It didn't con get, and get from city to city. It usually went from uh, city to river or city to canal, where the goods could then be shipped over time. Um, cities began to be connected by railroads. Uh, it wasn't until after the Civil War there was the national or even a regional rail network. It was all basically for trade. Um, the most notable of these railroad lines was the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, uh, commonly shortened to the B&O, um, of Monopoly fame. And you see a map of that there. It kind of lined the, uh, the upper Midwest, similar to the, the way many of the roads and canals did. The most important thing about all these advances in transportation, roads, canals, railroads, all of that, is that it binds the nation together and leads to the biggest impact of the Industrial Revolution, which was the market revolution. During this time, between about 1815 and, say, 1850, there is a major sea change in the United States regarding how commerce operates and how people interact. At the beginning of that period, you primarily had a very rural, very agrarian nation that was isolated pockets of people, small towns, right, villages, that really did not interact with each other. By the end of that period, by about 1850, you have a huge national interconnected network of business, of farming, of industry, and everybody is interacting one with another. Um, you go during that same period from households making everything, the idea of cottage industry and the household sort of being the center of everything in society, um, to having people buying things on an open market from complete strangers, uh, which is something that at the beginning of that period would have been totally unimaginable. Now, this is a big change, but it does bring about some issues and some questions that uh, took a long time to answer and in some cases are not fully answered. For instance, what is the role of government in regulating these big businesses that are developing? Um, railroads are very, very important in shipping goods, people, and all of that. You know, who controls the railroads? Who sets railroads uh, shipping rates? You know, do the railroads have the right to do that, or should the government regulate how much people should have to pay to use the railroads? Uh, you also have an expanding wealth gap during this time. Um, many wealthy merchants in the East got even wealthier, for instance. Um, you could move up. There was social mobility, but it wasn't common. Um, you know, if you were born uh, poor without a lot of advantages or opportunities, um, there wasn't a lot there that could, you know, help you advance uh, your, your station in society. Despite that, things are still better here uh, than they were in Europe, so immigration increases, especially from northern and western Europe throughout the early 1800s. That is uh, also um, uh, spurred along by the Irish potato famine in the 1840s, which uh, leads to a large influx of the Irish uh, in the middle part of the 19th century. Um, because of new technology, 
um, that we've talked about a little bit, standard of living does improve. People are able to make a little bit more money, have a little bit more disposable income. Um, and uh, people's ways of life often uh, got better in the process. That will do it for today. Make sure to keep up with your reading. And if you're one of mine, ask if you have any questions. Cheers.